Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned earlier in my statement, I just really wanted to, to thank all the contracting parties. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, today marks 11 months since I started. And as such, uh, this report is for the period from, from when I started up until the end of May. A lot has happened, a lot has happened, and I'm, and I'm really just in awe of many old faces that I, I reconnected with having um, spent my youth in this convention. I've returned 25 years later to Glong, um, but also really returned to a mature convention, and that has done so much, so much. And so when I arrived, um, I spent a lot of time listening, learning, watching, and learning some more. And through this learning, I was also able to, to, to really put together a vision for this triennium, and my vision in where I see the Secretariat supporting the contracting parties. And this vision has three pillars. The first looking at visibility. How do we make the work of this convention visible? And that visibility includes raising awareness, connecting to the work of SIPA, building on the science that we have under SDRP, but also the work that a lot of different partners are doing on behalf of our convention, but also really on behalf of the world. The second pillar is the issue of collaboration. And really this speaks to SDG 17. How do we collaborate? And I think COVID pandemic taught us so much about how we cannot afford to work in silos. And the third is the issue of resource mobilization. And really this just doesn't speak to money. It also speaks to the skills. What right skills do we have to deal with the world and how fit are we and are we really fit for purpose as a convention in a time that's changing so fast and in a world that is much more than a one degree world, but it's a 1.52 degree and warmer and the manifestation of change happens mostly in wetlands. So during this period, uh, one of the first things that I also did uh, was to really make sure that you know what we're doing at the Secretariat. You also have an idea of where I am, which meetings I'm sitting in, the conversations I'm having, the places I visit, many where I've never been and I've been very curious about, and I also have the honor of just showing my children the globe that I'm going to see this location in Mexico, or that place in China, or that place in Rwanda. And out of curiosity, of course, I think this convention finally had a resolution in November on youth and wetlands. A lot of young people are asking questions. Where do we go? What are we doing differently? Please include us, not just bring us at the table, we are part of the decision-making process. So you will see those four elements of, of this report where it really speaks also to, to this vision um, that I put together. We really were the ones that set in motion the multilateral space in November. In December, we had the CBD COP, which was also a China Kunming COP. And out of that COP really came the Global Biodiversity Framework. And that framework, we're very actively involved as a convention. And thanks really also to the support of many partners, including the IOPs, and making sure that these global processes are really very visible in the work that we do. But I really want to also speak around the operation of, of our Secretariat. It's an amazing team, as I said earlier on. It's really trying to make sure that we, we work very consistently and also communicate as, as regularly as possible and really bringing you up to speed, particularly in preparing meetings such as this. So it was really good once we consolidated everything around uh, the COP, what came out of the COP, and also having our own internal you know, work planning session. What are we doing? Where are we going? How do we do all of that? I also wanted to say that um, it was really fantastic, and, and I really just want to thank you and, and Shoban as, as the new chairs and vice chair of STRP. We have the 25th session of STRP here, and, and it was just fantastic to see how many of these experts came together, many in this room and also in the overflow room, bringing together a lot of ideas that were coming from our contracting parties and also the challenges um, and opportunities. Um, I want to say that um, it was really great that Zimbabwe offered to do COP15 in, in Southern Africa. And I think this, uh, 
will be an exciting and momentous period for, for the continent and to really just show the interconnectivity of these spaces. And talking of interconnectivity, um, we've been really working within the multilateral space, connecting with many conventions, as you will see from this report, really making sure that we are in regular touch with our counter convention CMS, UNCCD, UNFCCC, um, and the CBD um, in particular. And you will hear from my colleagues about an update on the biodiversity working uh, liaison working group, but also the plan for this work, you know, um, work plan to be finalized. I just want to touch a little bit on the issue of visibility because I, that, that's the thing that I spoke by um, uh, earlier on. World Wetlands Day was momentous. It was just absolutely fantastic. I have the opportunity to go to Costa Rica and having, it, it was kind of coming full circle because I went back to Costa Rica for the second time because the first time I went to Costa Rica I was an intern in the convention and I went there for a call in 1999. And this time around I went over to see the work that's happening in the country but also really celebrate World Wetlands Day which was talking to its time for wetland restoration and seeing those mangrove ecosystems but really seeing the connectivity in the region and many other subtropical areas to see how this work is, is, is being done. It was really great to see the participation globally, everywhere. Even as I showed up in New York in March for the UN Water Conference, everybody was asking about World Wetlands Day. And I said, it is your day. Tell us what's happening, whether you're a contracting party or not, it is your day. Tell us what's going on and what's happening. And you can see the statistics there in the report. It was very impressive. Loads of young people, loads of posts, and loads of really, really sharing and in terms of what's happening. But I think what's also really coming up to the fore um, in terms of it raising the issue of visibility is around the issue of cities. Um, cities everywhere. Uh, we all come from cities, most of us at least. Uh, for those of you that live in rural spaces, we also depend on the connectivity of cities. The presence of wetland in, wetlands in cities is something that's coming up very, very much in our spaces. I want to touch on the issue of multilateralism because we are now in a space, a very deep space of multilateralism. Even as we're meeting here um, in Lyon, the Africa Climate Summit is happening, the world is meeting there, and I really mean the world is meeting there because um, the Secretary General of the UN is there and many other participants. And this is really gonna set the tone of the conversations as they will happen at COP28. But in between all of this, our work is also very central within this multilateral space as a treaty. And so for me to be able to also raise visibility of our convention, I've been able to do a lot of briefings, at least a couple of briefings, um, to you know, but also bilaterally with some missions in Geneva to really bring them up to speed because as you know, changes happen very quickly within uh, the UN missions here, but really, it's really great to also see and, and, and thank you. I can see Ambassador from Panama is here. Um, many uh, missions really supporting this convention and also very curious and asking a lot of questions about the work that we're doing. The issue of resource mobilization, um, I really want to speak to this as well, um, and you can see from the report a lot of details there, but I just want to recognize that when we met at COP14 uh, and, and really in recognizing the um, government of Belgium and supporting um, to also together with Norway, the issue of our national uh, inventories. Wetland inventories are so necessary and so important. Now there's a realization now more than ever that what we report in this convention also feeds into what's happening in NBSAPs. Uh, other reports that are happening, the NDCs, uh, what I was talking about in Costa Rica. When, when I was in Costa Rica, I was so beautifully amazed about how the data from mangroves is being fed into the NDCs. These are wetland, wetlands of international importance and that science but we need resources. Contracting parties require resources to be able to do that work. And really we count on the support also of um, the, the support that comes from our IOPs, it really being our eyes on the ground and supporting the contracting parties. I also want to recognize the support that came from both Canada, um, really on supporting the youth work and also Australia, um, and also Switzerland as our host and making sure that, you know, 
if we cannot update the Ramsey site information, we do not have up-to-date data. We don't know what we've lost. We don't know what the situation is. And so my team has been quite vigilant in making sure that the information that comes in is also very consol consolidated um, very quickly. I want to say that our convention is one that has had a very long relationship with a private sector entity. Um, I went to Paris to meet with Danon. Since we met, we've had this relationship for 25 years. Um, Danon supports every year the Avian Award to make sure that you know young people, older people, everybody who's part of wetland societies and communities are supported to just showcase some of the most incredible work that happens um, there. We got also some funding from the Nagao Foundation in Japan, which has also been really amazing to just support and really just speaking to some of, of many um, supporting mechanisms that as a convention we've been supporting. But to be able to demonstrate and show the world, we also need to communicate all of this. Where are the wins? Where are the opportunities? Where are we making gains? I was really nicely surprised when I visited China in Shenzhen and, and went to the to the Maipo Reserve in Hong Kong that WWF has been working and supporting very actively, but also on the Shenzhen side on, on, on Fujian where um, the Mangrove Conservation Foundation has worked extensively together with WWF to remove invasive species. EBES report came out two days ago really talking about why we need to remove these invasive species. And because of the removal of these invasive species, we have seen the increase of the black-faced uh, spoonbill in this area and part of the you know, flyway, the Asia-Australasia the Asia flyway. But also for the first time in 25 years, they saw otters, river otters, which are nocturnal and you can only see them on camera at night. That speaks to the work that you're doing as a convention and as contracting parties to make sure that these spaces are recovering. But there's also a lot of challenges. How do we meet those challenges? Lastly, but not the least, I just really want to speak to the fact that um, really for all this to happen, it requires human resources and warm bodies here at the Secretariat. Um, my colleagues are really a dedicated team to make sure that we consolidate every information that we receive, we communicate that, and really just provide all the necessary information. So I just uh, want to leave it there, Chair, and, and hand back to you, and just want to thank you again for your confidence and also your trust in me as the Secretary General of the Convention. Thank you.